We are day 918 of the Trump administration, and there it was in court papers filed today, the I word, clear as day. Even if the intention of Congress and Democrats in Congress could not be less clear. To listen to the court filing, the House Judiciary Committee has already effectively begun an impeachment inquiry. They've petitioned a federal judge to unseal what are supposed to be secret grand jury materials related to the Mueller investigation. In the document, the committee notes articles of impeachment are, quote, under consideration as part of the committee's investigation, although no final determination has been made because Department of Justice policies will not allow prosecution of a sitting president. Uh, the United States House of Representatives is the only institution of the federal government that can now hold President Trump accountable for these actions. To do so, you thought we were done, the House must must have access to all the relevant facts and consider whether to exercise its full Article I powers, including a constitutional power of the utmost gravity approval of articles of impeachment. Well, this morning, the chairman of the Judiciary Committee, New York Democrat Jerry Nadler, along with members of his committee behind him, explained their latest legal move, but with slightly differing perspectives. I, I think too much has been made of the phrase an impeachment inquiry. We are doing what our court filing says we are doing, what I, what I said we are doing, and that is to say we are using our full Article I powers uh, to investigate the conduct of the president and to consider whether to, what remedies there are. Among other things we will consider uh, are, are, are obviously are, are, uh, whether to recommend articles of impeachment. I would say we are in an impeachment investigation. And as to the results of the investigation, it could lead to articles of impeachment or it could lead to something else. We're now crossing a threshold with the filing of this um, of this uh, with this filing. And we are now officially entering into an examination of whether or not to recommend um, the uh, uh, articles of impeachment. Now, was that the same song or three separate pieces of sheet music? We will hear from another member of the Judiciary Committee, Democratic Congresswoman Madeline Dean of Pennsylvania, in just a bit. Speaker Nancy Pelosi has been working to keep her caucus in line while she resists calls to launch impeachment, impeachment proceedings. According to The New York Times, quote, she signed off on using the impeachment investigation language in the House Judiciary lawsuit, and it would appear to provide a middle course for Democrats, allowing them to continue to build a case without forcing members from moderate districts to vote on whether to formally declare impeachment proceedings to be underway. Now, a few things here. This was immediately branded impeachment light today. It's also important to note Congress has left town. They're off on a six-week summer break. And to that end, today, Speaker Pelosi was asked about concerns that she might be trying to run out the clock on impeachment. No, I'm not trying to run out the clock. Let's get sophisticated about this, okay? But how long do you think these court fights will take? We will proceed when we have what we need to proceed, not one day sooner. And everybody has the liberty and the luxury to espouse their own position and to criticize me for trying to go down the path in the most determined, positive way. Again, their advocacy for impeachment only gives me leverage. I have no complaint with what they are doing. Well, I'm willing to um, take whatever heat there is there to say when, we, when we, the decision will be made in a timely fashion. This is an endless and when we have a, a, the best, strongest possible case. Right now, at least 97 Democrats are calling for an impeachment inquiry. Seven of them came out in support after the Mueller testimony. As for the public, a new morning consult Politico poll conducted after the Mueller hearing found 37 percent of voters say they support the idea of impeachment. 46 percent say they're against it. The Democrats can read polls pretty well. So can the president. And late today, Trump lashed out at House Democrats while getting in a swipe at his predecessor. I watch Bob Mueller and they have nothing. There's no collusion. There's no obstruction. They have nothing. Uh, it's a disgrace. We want to find out what happened with the last Democrat president. Let's look into Obama the way they've looked at me. The Republicans were gentlemen and women when we had 
the majority in the House, they didn't do subpoenas all day long. They didn't do what they — what these people have done. What they're doing is a disgrace, so destructive to our country. And I think that's why we're going to take back the House. That's why we're easily going to hold the presidency, and we're going to continue to hold the Senate. These people are clowns. The Democrats are clowns. Not long after that, news broke about Trump's wall in a 5-4 decision down party lines. The Supreme Court said the president can proceed with plans to shift about $2.5 billion in unspent military funds to build 100 miles of wall along the southern border. That decision reverses a lower court ruling. Trump, of course, quickly declared the decision, quote, a big victory and a big win for border security and the rule of law, all of which brings us to our leadoff discussion to end this week on a Friday night. Jonathan Allen, NBC News national political reporter. Melanie Zanona, a congressional reporter for Politico. Franco Ordonez, White House correspondent for NPR. And with us here in New York, Jessica Roth, a former assistant U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York, now a professor at the Benjamin Cardozo School of Law at Yeshiva University here in New York. Welcome to you all. Jonathan, your headline, what you wrote for us today, reads, Mueller left impeachment breadcrumbs if Democrats choose to follow. Tell our audience what you meant by that. <laughs> Well, look, uh, the first thing about all this, Brian, is uh, whether or not the president uh, committed high crimes and misdemeanors that are impeachable, uh, the question remains as to whether the House uh, has the votes to impeach him. And right now, there is no evidence of that, even if there is evidence of those high crimes and misdemeanors. I think what you saw uh, Robert Mueller do the other day uh, in front of the House, and I think this is important, even though there was a lot of attention to optics, what he did was he detailed that case. He detailed the case that he made in his report uh, about the president soliciting, encouraging, uh, and accepting help from a hostile foreign power. Uh, he made the case about the president lying uh, to the American public about it. And he made the case about uh, obstruction of justice, uh, instance after instance of obstruction of justice. Now, uh, it's up to the House of Representatives to decide whether those uh, actions rise to the level of impeachment. Uh, and the question's going to be answered, I think, when House members go back to their districts uh, for the next six weeks for this August recess. They're going to hear from constituents. They're going to hear from donors. And if uh, those folks are, are fired up and angry and tell them they want to see the president impeached, I think you'll see a House that's very motivated when they come back. And if they don't hear that from their constituents or they hear the opposite from their constituents, uh, I, I think you'll see something going much slower. So, Jessica, you're the House counsel for purposes of this discussion. Tell us how the I word ended up in this court filing. What was this about? So this filing was about getting the district court in the District of Columbia to release grand jury material that had been redacted out of the Mueller report from the report itself and the underlying grand jury it's material. It's usually secret. It's kept secret and it's protected by federal law, a particular rule of criminal procedure that limits the circumstances in which a court can release grand jury material. This filing was about getting within one of the exceptions in that rule. Um, the District of Columbia, the Court of Appeals uh, there, recently issued an opinion that limited the circumstances in which a court can release grand jury material. And the court, the D.C. Circuit, said in that opinion that an impeachment inquiry would be a circumstance in which the district court could release the material. So this filing was about getting within that exception. And this was the first time that the House went on the record in an official filing saying we are, in fact, engaged in an impeachment inquiry. Any chance a federal judge comes back and says, are you really? There's, of course, a chance that the court will, and we haven't yet seen the opposition, if there will be. I assume that the Department of Justice is going to oppose that. They haven't said so yet, I understand it. So we'll need to see the response. But I think that if the House is representing to the court that under the rules governing the House that the House decides upon, it is, in fact, engaged in an impeachment inquiry. And that's what they've said in this filing. I think the court would give considerable deference to the House's own interpretation of its rules. And there are facts to back up the representation that they're engaged in an impeachment inquiry. As set forth in this filing, uh, there have been articles of impeachment introduced in the House, and they've been mm -hmm. referred to the Judiciary Committee. And the House passed a resolution giving considerable authority to the Judiciary Committee to uh, enforce subpoenas without going to the full House. So there's a lot to back up the assertion that they're, in fact, engaged 
in an impeachment inquiry. This is why we have a lawyer present. Uh, so, Melanie, however giant a sideshow this is, does anything about this filing, anything you saw or heard today, put Nadler and Pelosi at odds more than they were Monday of this week? Yeah, well, they're definitely trying to downplay the idea that there's any gulf between them or that there's any tensions. But my colleagues at Politico actually reported that just this week after the mulling hearing, they had a private closed door meeting and Nadler tried to press Pelosi to open an impeachment query and she rebuffed him once again. This is something he's done repeatedly. So, look, I think that there could be some room for tensions to grow between them. But right now they are trying to put on a united front heading into the August recess. And it's very significant that Pelosi signed off off on the language in this court filing, which said for the first time, as Jessica laid out, that the House Democrats are considering whether to launch an impeachment inquiry. That's a big deal. I think that shows that Pelosi is trying to keep the base happy. She's trying to throw a bone to these pro-impeachment wing Democrats. But at the same time, she is not comfortable with formally opening an inquiry. She's trying to protect her moderate members who don't want to have to take that tough sort of vote, especially heading into 2020. Hey, Franco, the president obviously could not be more bellicose on this subject. How uh, how is the West Wing feeling really about the prospect of impeachment these days? Well, I mean, look, the, the, the West Wing does not want impeachment hearings. They're pushing back. Kellyanne Conway today was, you know, pressing back, defending the White House, defending Trump, saying this is not something that is good for the country. President Trump is saying the same thing, saying, like, this is just a waste of time. You played the clip of Trump saying that the Democrats are just trying to go on a fishing ex exercise. They just want to impede, impede. Um, but, you know, you also talked to many Republicans that in the end, they feel like they could actually win out on this. It wasn't that, you know, wasn't that that long ago. Uh, and I'm sure Pelosi knows the history of Newt Gingrich when he brought, um, you know, pushed the House to the House Republicans to impeach Bill Clinton. It was he who left Newt Gingrich and Bill Clinton was able to stay when the Senate backed him up. Um, John Allen, let's um, let's be real here. Uh, Pelosi, it is said, is most worried about around 30 seats. Uh, Chris Matthews had a uh, conservative Democrat from Southern Jersey on tonight who said, in effect, I don't see no high crimes or misdemeanors in this. Uh, she is worried about her majority. She's worried about all the seats they flipped to get where they are that made her the speaker. She doesn't want to force all of them into really rough elections back home because they took a shot on this momentous decision. Well, the worst possible outcome for her, of course, Brian, would be to put a vote on the floor about a House impeachment inquiry or an actual impeachment and have it lose. Um, and so, you know, there's a, a lot of she's the one who counts the votes. Right. Uh, she's the Speaker of the House. Of course, there are uh, whips in the House and a majority leader and they all count the votes together. But Nancy Pelosi is the one who knows where the votes are. And, uh, you know, again, there's no evidence that they have those votes there. Uh, I put together a very sophisticated graphic here. Right now, we have about 100 Democrats who uh, have said they're for an impeachment inquiry and about 135 uh, who either have said they're against it or who have not said that they're for an impeachment inquiry. Uh, there's a long way to go to get there for her. And as Melanie was talking about, there is that set of Democrats for whom it is a bad vote just to take the vote. They will alienate either uh, the base voters they need to show up to win their reelection or the swing voters they need to come their way who... Uh, you know, were Republicans in the past or who might even uh, split their ticket and vote Trump and Democrat uh, otherwise. So uh, this is problematic for a significant part of her caucus and certainly for a lot of those who made her, who made the Democratic majority. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.